I, it's 629. I'm just testing my audio. This is Jane. Can, uh, can I be heard? Are people, is it all sort of working? I can hear you, Jane. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> there's Ryan. Okay, great. I have a couple other presenters. So it's 630. And we definitely have some attendees in the house. This is great. People are connected by phone and and laptops and smartphones. And I'm going to actually just be waiting one more minute and then we're going to get going because I know there's a, uh, people are anxious. Of course, they'll want to ask their questions and get more information. And uh, we'll just uh, honor the people that showed up on time here. We really, really appreciate that. So I'm going to start by saying who I am. My name is Jane Farrow and I work for uh, a company called the Department of Words and Deeds, which does public consultation and engagement. Um, we are doing the facilitation and community engagement on this project on behalf of the city and Homes First. Uh, so that's sort of my introduction, um, but I also, uh, there's introductions for the presenters to come and um, we're going to just make sure that we're, re we're recording. Uh, this is, uh, we're making a recording that can be posted on the website later. So, um, can uh, the um, people working on this record, uh, confirm that we are indeed recording at this time? Hi, Jane. Yes, we are. Okay, great. All right. So, I'll just carry on. Thank you. Um, so, that's what that I, I mean, the engagement. So, I'll be facilitating tonight's meeting and making sure that, you know, there's a respectful space where people can get questions asked and answered and we can have dialogue and this meeting will take about two hours and so that's basically who i am uh, we're taking notes of course that'll be posted on the website and uh, comments and questions are not attributed to people individually but you know just said there was a question about this or that so um probably some of you are familiar with uh, these town hall processes already so let's just get rolling i also want to note that uh, it's it's a two-hour virtual meeting uh, but you are seeing if you're if you're joining us on computer, the website address uh, for these shelter projects, including this one at 101 Placer Court. Uh, that's uh, Toronto.ca slash shelter expansion sites. So let's go to the next slide. Before we meet some more people, I want to uh, introduce um, Bob Wang, uh, because this event is being offered in English and Mandarin. As you can see, the presentation deck here has been translated on the right side. Uh, the presentations will be delivered in English and interpreted into Mandarin uh, by Bob Wang when we're into the Q&A component of this meeting. Uh, he is also a third party consultant engaged to do uh, this translation work. There's Bob. You can just wave your hand there, Bob. Yes. Say hello. Hello, hi, Brian. <laughs> there you go. And uh, we will be making sure that we pause and uh, answer, uh, you know, get questions that are asked, translated, get the answers translated. But as I said, while we go through the presentation, it will be uh, simply uh, on the translated on the screen there in Mandarin. Uh, so, uh, and once this information is complete, this whole slide deck will be posted on the project website as well. So. Uh, if people are here at the meeting and they want to get this, it's accessible to the public within a few days of this meeting happening. Um, next slide, please. Uh, you know, not everyone, it's, it, it's, it can be difficult, some of this technology. So if you're having trouble hearing or understanding what's being said, and you just want to use your phone, you can dial 416-915-6530 to connect to this session by telephone. Um, you'll be asked to enter an access code. Get your pens ready. That's uh, 177 7952 uh, Hopefully everyone's connected now, but we do have that information you can ask for. Again, if you, if you need it, uh, we can get it for you. Next, please. 
the meeting is being recorded, as I mentioned. Um, and again, a summary of your input, your feedback, your questions and responses will be uh, captured in a feedback summary from this meeting and posted with this presentation on that website within, within a week or 10 days of this meeting happening. Uh, this recording will also be available in closed caption format on that website. Um, and so we ask that no one include personal information when they're asking questions. So, you know, for, of course, I'm saying my name and the presenters say their name, but you don't have to say my name is so and so. And my question is this, uh, we prefer it if you just remain anonymous, um, because of, uh, you know, it's being posted on a website. Later, so, um, that's how we do it at the city. Um, the, um. You, you, you can uh, contact us again. This, this, this email is everywhere on our website. Um, it's a uh, CLC dot 101 place report at gmail dot com. All right, next please. So, I'm going to actually uh, turn this over now to Ryan Evershed of homes 1st, who can introduce himself at the same time. Who's going to do a land acknowledgement. Thank you, Jane. Um, my name is Ryan. I'm the manager of community engagement and client programming with homes 1st. Uh, thank you for having me and thank you for allowing me to read off the acknowledgement. I know with the um, national truth and reconciliation day last week, a lot of us took a lot of time to reflect. mourn some of the losses of our indigenous. Uh, um, countrymen and also just to think about what we can do to better support uh, our indigenous communities. Um, and so it's, I'm, I'm really grateful to get the opportunity to read this out. Um, I know we're all meeting from different places around the city, but uh, we acknowledge the land we are on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the, on the Anishinaabeg, the Haudenosaunee, the Chippewas, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nation, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13, signed with the Mississaugas of the Credit, and with the Williams Treaty, signed with Mississauga, multiple Mississauga and Chippewa bands. To read, <clears throat> sorry, go ahead. No. To read the next uh, African ancestral acknowledgement, I do want to introduce Eileen. Eileen is our site manager, um, so I'll give her a chance just to say hello. Hi everyone, my name is Eileen, and I'm going to be the site manager of 101 Place or Court. The city of Toronto acknowledges all treaty people, including those who came here as settlers as migrants, either in this generation or generations past. And those of us who have come, who have came here involuntarily, particularly those brought to these lands as a result of the transatlantic slave trade and slavery. We pay tribute to those ancestors of African origin and descent. Thank you, Miley. Uh, all right, actually, and there will be other presenters um, at the meeting today. I just want to uh, introduce them. Some of them will probably have their camera on now. But Shelley Carroll, who is the city councilor for Ward 17, Don Valley North, is here. We'll be hearing remarks from uh, Councilor Carroll. Um, and Tracy Campbell, who's the manager of infrastructure planning and development at Shelter Support and Housing Administration of the City of Toronto. And Ryan Evershed, who you've met already. Uh, they are going to be supported by additional staff from uh, Homes First and SH SSHA who will be on hand if they need uh, assistance um, answering questions. We also have representatives here from 33 Division, uh, a community policing um, officer, uh, Christopher Chan. Uh, so we're trying our best to get the right people up to the table here to address uh, your concerns and hear your feedback. Um, next slide, please. Okay, uh, I just want to, you know, so this sort of is a good, uh, uh, clear statement of what we're doing at this meeting. And that is that we are first and foremost going to provide an overview of the placer court shelter program, including the services and supports that are currently planned for the site. So that's going to take about 40, you know, maybe 30 minutes up front because we've already done some in the slide deck here. Um, and then we're going to hear your questions, concerns, offers of support, uh, questions of clarification. Uh, you'll be allowed to ask questions by a Q&A box, in addition to over the phone, in addition to on your laptop with 
out the video on. Again, we don't want identifying details, but many different ways to feed a question or concern in. And you are this this meeting is really done in service of trying to, you know, enhance the opportunities for success of this facility in the community and also to, you know, interest people in joining what will be a community liaison committee because we're looking to do ongoing engagement, not just this meeting to, you know, connect strongly to the community with a, a volunteer staffed. Uh, vol uh, community liaison committee to make sure that info information is flowing back and forth between the community and the shelter, building relationships and making sure this is a successful uh, uh, service in your community. Next shelter and uh, next uh, slide, please. Here's the agenda. As I said, there's going to be about 45 minutes of this and presentations, uh, 60 minutes of Q and A and a little bit of closing and next steps. Um, next. All right, and with that, I am going to um, introduce uh, Councillor Shelley Carroll uh, for some welcome remarks. Over to you, Councillor Carroll. Thank you so much, Jane. Uh, good evening, everyone. And maybe you can unpin uh, the, the presentation so we can see the Councillor. And also, we are going to have this translated. So, uh, sorry. But yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Away you go. Good evening, everyone, and and uh, thank you so much for for joining us tonight. It was really important to me to offer this uh, very locally and and certainly translated so everyone could take part. Uh,晚上大家好，谢谢你们参加这个会议。那么呢，今天晚上对我非常重要，有可以提出这个机会呢，用这种翻译的方式来给大家提供这个资讯。Uh, uh, with, thanks, Bob. We want you to know that that uh, uh, the translation isn't just for tonight. As you know, there will be the translated presentation on the website so that everyone in the community can understand. But also, I have uh, Maggie, who's with us tonight, and another staff member, Ivan, who will continue to be able to translate at least to Mandarin, which is our, our main other language in the community. 给大家说一下呢，嗯，这个翻译呢，只是为今天晚上。那么以后的话，这个翻译呢，还会翻译好以后放在这个网上网站那个网站那个上面，这样的话人人都可以明白啊是什么。另外一点，我还有一个这个
obviously become very popular uh, uh, due to COVID. So we're we're uh, we're rolling with it. And uh, next slide, please. In in meetings in general, uh, these this uh, sort of a con code of conduct, of course, applies to all city city held meetings. We want people to be brief and respectful. Make one question or comment at a time. Share the space. Uh, engage with others. To be patient and know that we're here to hear concerns as well as take. If there's something that we can't answer, we will get back to you with that answer. Uh, if if there's time runs out and your the Q and A list is there, we are going to still get answers to all of those questions and publish them on the website on a community bulletin. So we're going to do our best to you know make sure you're honored because you've shown up and you care about this, and we're committed to a good transparent public process here. Um, and we are sure that you are ultimately really here to be respectful and patient as well. So let's uh, have a great meeting. And next slide, please. Um, the question and answer period, I'm going to review this again after the presentation uh, because it will be fresh then just before we go into it. But basically, as I said, there's a Q&A box, uh, which is in English only on the lower right of the screen. And uh, you can verbally ask questions uh, in English or Mandarin on the audio by phone or laptop. So let's uh, keep rolling here. And uh, we are now going to hand it over to Tracy Campbell, who is the manager uh, of uh, infrastructure planning and development uh, for shelter support and housing administration in the city of Toronto. All right, Tracy, are you on camera and can you uh, I'm on camera and I hope you can hear me. There you go, Tracy. That's Perfect. great. Take Thank it you, away. Jane. Thanks. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. My name is Tracy Campbell. I'm one of the managers with Shelter Support and Housing Administration, and I want to thank you for taking the time out to come out and hear more about 101 Placer Court and the services uh, that will be provided there. I'll walk you through a bit of a presentation that provides an overview of homelessness in Toronto and also uh, talks a bit about the services that Shelter Support and Administration provides with our community partners. I hope this presentation will address some of your questions that you may have and myself, as well as the other panelists will be available after the presentation to answer any additional questions that may come up. Next slide, please. Oh, no, this is the right slide. Please keep it here, Marcus. Thank you. Uh, for those who are listening in, this slide just has an image of what a, typ a typical shelter room or bed looks like. And I want to share with you that homelessness has been on the rise um, in Toronto since 2011. And we know that people are staying in our shelters longer than they have in the past. Uh, even before this pandemic, our system was close to capacity, uh, despite adding nearly uh, 3,500 shelter spaces in the last few years. Uh, Toronto Shelter System provides more than 6,000 spaces to support those experiencing homelessness, including 2,600 spaces, which have recently been added um, in shelters and hotel programs. Next slide, please. So this slide is mainly text for those who are listening in. So while occupancy in the shelter system has declined uh, since the start of the pandemic, this was mostly driven by the number of refugee claimants and families that have decreased coming into the country. Capacity in the shelter system for single individuals is currently higher than it has been the same time last year. Uh, in April of this year, SSHA conducted its fifth street, street needs assessment. And this, this is a citywide point in time count and survey of people experiencing homelessness in Toronto. And it's conducted in collaboration with community partners and the homelessness sector. Uh, this recent street needs assessment will provide critical data to understand the impact of the pandemic on homelessness. And it also provides us with uh, information on the broader needs and barriers that individuals who are experiencing homelessness face in Toronto. Next slide, please. So for those who are listening in, this is a map of the city. And it's just to illustrate that uh, Shelter Support and Housing Administration um, is the division in the city that manages the emergency shelter system. We currently offer, oversee over 80 shelters and 24 hour respite services operated by skilled community agencies and the city directly operates over 20 shelter programs. 
As you can see from the map, the availability of shelter services varies across communities throughout the city. Our knowledge and expertise um, is focused on three outcomes when it comes to shelter operations. The first is to provide people experiencing homelessness in Toronto access to safe, high quality and emergency shelter. Uh, the second is to ensure that people are provided housing focused supports and ensure that homelessness is rare, brief and non reoccurring. Sorry, my screen is just acting up a little bit here. And the third is to provide uh, to ensure that low income households have access to housing and benefit programs that provide affordability and stability to one's housing situation. Providing emergency shelter for people who are experiencing homelessness is an important community service that is offered across communities in the city. Sites are located within communities, which means that they are often near community services, such as libraries, uh, community centers, schools, and healthcare centers. Shelter, shelters are located within communities, not only because it's important for people staying in shelters to have to be close to these community resources, but shelters are not are not allowed to be in areas that are zoned uh, strictly commercial or industrial. Next slide, please. I know that everyone recognizes these are extraordinary times and as such require us to deploy unique, unique solutions. Since 2020, Toronto has implemented the most comprehensive COVID-19 response for people who are experiencing homelessness in Canada. And it's focused on infection, pre infection prevention, recovery and housing. This plan continues to evolve and respond to current conditions. We hope to stay one step ahead and protect and prioritize people who are staying in shelters. We have opened 26 new temporary sites to create physical distancing in shelters and provide space for people to move indoors from outdoor encampments. As of September 10th, 65% of people 12 years, 12 years and older who are staying in a city shelter have received one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine and 49% have received two doses. Just under 6,300 people have moved from the shelter system into permanent housing during the pandemic, which is an amazing feat. Next slide, please. Many of you have asked how we make decisions on sites that are selected for new shelters. And so I'd like to spend a bit of time just sharing this information and I hope it's helpful. People experiencing homelessness for many, re for many reasons and pathways to homelessness are multi-layered and multifaceted. It's not uh, uncommon that each one of us could experience homelessness. Next slide, please. Fine. Are you uh, able to see that slide, the criteria? It's coming up, it's coming in now. Okay. So this, this shelter, this slide describes the criteria for selecting a shelter location. So our goal is to ensure that there are services that these services are in all neighborhoods. So that as much as possible, people can stay within their communities and maintain their employment, stay connected to friends and family uh, if they experience homelessness. We comply by city bylaws and to the Toronto Housing Charter. We work with our real estate division, allowing them to source potential properties based on criteria we provide them. And once a potential property that meets the zoning requirements is identified, we ask, assess the suitability for the location uh, for its access to transit and other services in the community, such as community centers and healthcare services, because we want to make sure uh, that folks that are accessing the shelter have access to these community services as well. Next slide, please. So 101 Placer Court was chosen as a shelter site. Um, as part of the council direction, it meets all the requirements and it's permitted for this use. And it's uh, to provide temporary accommodations and related support services and to also assist people moving it to move into housing. Next slide, please. Great. 
So over the last few decades, uh, the way shelters have been designed has evolved. Uh, the city has the new shelter design guidelines uh, and it provides best practices for the planning and design of shelters. Uh, the guidelines are what was followed when designing 101 place support. Next slide, please. It's sticky a little bit here on my uh, button, but this next slide uh, provides uh, a bit of an image of the back um, side of 101 Placer. So this is a two-story building. It's close uh, to TTC access. Renovations in the building consisted of complete removal and replacement of the interior finishes and also a redesign of the floor plan. And the property includes modernization of the building exterior to create a more aesthetically pleasing impression. The building also uh, features an outdoor community area for residents, along with indoor lounge and common areas, and the shelter is also pet friendly. Next slide, please. And this image on this slide has a bit of what the interior of the location will look like. And so this December, the site will open in Ward 17, and it'll be used as a new shelter program. The, built, the property is purchased and Homes First will be the operator of the program. The city is committed to, uh, committed to 58 beds that are physically distanced at the site, but the built form maximum capacity is 87. Um, and the site will also include office space and programming space to uh, assist with the, with the program. Okay, <clears throat> I think uh, that's great. Uh, Tracy, thank you very much. Uh, that's the part of the presentation that's being given by the city. And we are now going to uh, get Ryan Evershed of Homes First to talk about what's going on inside the building, the program overview, as we call it. So, Ryan, you're up. Thank you so much. Um, so, thanks, everybody. I know we, I introduced myself. I'm, I'm Ryan. I'm the manager of community engagement with Homes First. Um, I'll give a quick spiel about me. Um, myself and Arlie, who you met at the beginning of the meeting, will kind of be, you'll probably get to know us quite a bit. We're kind of the main points of contact when it comes to this program. Uh, my role as manager of community engagement is really building a sense of community internally and externally. So internally, that means programs, events, volunteering, engagement opportunities, those kind of things. And then externally, it's building partnerships with folks like, like yourselves. Um, Engaging with stakeholders, hosting uh, info sessions and community meetings, doing community education and addressing community concerns and really kind of bridging that gap between uh, homes first residents and, and the community outside of the shelter. <clears throat> uh, next slide, please. So, a little bit about Homes First. So, Homes First is a nonprofit organization that provides housing and support services to uh, those experiencing homelessness. Um, the shelter will be run uh, uh, and offered case management services, uh, housing uh, search help, uh, three meals a day plus one snack, harm reduction uh, programs and supplies and recreational programming. Uh, Homes First has been providing supporting supportive housing and shelters for over 35 years to all populations. Uh, we currently operate 13 uh, rent geared to income supportive housing buildings, five shelters, uh, two warming centers, one respite uh, and three temporary uh, hotel sites across the city as well. Um, we're war one of the largest uh, providers of homes for people with the fewest options in Toronto and really Homes First specializes in and takes pride in housing and supporting the hardest to house in Toronto. So those with uh, more severe mental health uh, and substance use challenges. Moving on to the program goals. So, some of our program goals, well, really the, uh, the ultimate goal, I think, of our service providers are providing a safe space and stabilizing supports for people currently living outside. And once you have those stable supports, it really enables folks to focus on uh, obtaining the goals they want outside of the shelter. Um, so, uh, another goal would be securing permanent uh, affordable uh, housing for residents, uh, developing programming that has a focus on building life skills and mental wellness. Uh, building a strong sense of community internally and externally, uh, creating programming opportunities that engage both the surrounding community and the shelter residents together, 
and creating programming and engagement opportunities that enable um, residents, uh, our shelter residents to share their stories and experiences. Um, that's gonna be a major goal of our community engagement coordinator who uh, we're in the process of hiring and um, they'll be part of our intensive case management team and building rapport and, and helping to provide avenues for our residents to express themselves and, and share their stories out in the community. <clears throat> Next slide, please. So there are many wraparound supports that we'll be providing for our residents at 101 Placer. Um, so that includes program staff that are on site 24 seven. So our frontline community shelter workers who are there to assist with day to day activities. Uh, they're there to help with crisis intervention, just any kind of uh, general inquiries our residents have. All meals provided on site, so that's three meals plus snacks. Uh, recreational and social engagement programming, uh, access to harm reduction supports uh, and supplies, uh, and, and of course, uh, following COVID-19 public health measures and ensuring safety around social distancing and, and, and um, providing proper pandemic uh, PPE as well. And then of course, every resident is assigned a case manage, uh, case management worker. So a case manager, uh, every, uh, we have a team which is consists of housing help workers, life skills workers, uh, and they get assigned, uh, every client is, is assigned one of those managers. Um, harm reduction on, on, uh, supports on site are regulated by, our, by public health and uh, they aim to reduce harm related to any kind of substance or drug use. Uh, on site services that we're offering all these on site services that we're offering are for program residents only. So they're not for the public. It's for only residents that, that live on site. Next slide, please. So, just going over the, the rights and responsibilities of our residents. So, like anybody, uh, shelter residents are equal residents of the city and have the same rights, freedoms privacies and responsibilities as others uh, living and residing in the city. Uh, they have the right to a safe place and uh, to a shelter and welcoming program. Next slide, please. So continuing with rights and responsibilities, um, there are conduct expectations and rules that must be uh, followed by all residents uh, when staying at the shelter. Uh, it's important to note that although we do have rules and policies for our residents, uh, as service providers, we can't generally can't force residents to do things against their will, but we do have conduct expectations and rules that must be followed. Uh, and we host regular resident meetings to make sure that uh, our, our uh, residents understand the rules and policies and guidelines. And that is also a big part of our case management team as well as checking in with those residents. Uh, we welcome feedback from the community. Um, we wanna be good neighbors and we can definitely adapt what we like to call a good neighbor policy that supports efforts <coughs> to address concerns that come directly from the community that we're in. For example, things like loitering or loud music uh, or you know anything really that, that comes across specific to that community. And if somebody is not able to adhere to those expectations, they are held accountable for their actions and face appropriate consequences. So that can include uh, the possibility of a discharge or a temporary discharge uh, if needed. Uh, if someone is discharged from the program, they're, not, they're given a referral to another appropriate shelter program. They're not just discharged uh, onto the street. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Okay. Great, thank you very much, Ryan. Um, it's great, we're making great time here, team, and that means we're gonna be getting to the Q&A part, part really soon, and we'll definitely have uh, uh, even a bit more time than we had on the agenda, so this is great. Uh, let's get to the next slide. I'm just gonna do two quick overview slides on the community engagement process, because you know people need to know, how do I have a voice in this? When can I have re feedback? What impact will my feedback have? So, you know, the city's very committed to having these sorts of engagement processes that are clear and transparent, and this is part of what we're doing tonight. So, um, we, we have been engaging with the community uh, in various ways and stakeholders and outreach for several months now um, with, with outreach to local businesses and stakeholders and that's been underway since the summer. And uh, we are now at the point of a public meeting, which, you know, you just want to have at the right time before the, the service opens so that people can learn more and ask questions, uh, but not too far beyond it. So, you, you know, too far before, because uh, you, you want to actually remember and make connections that are going to sustain as we move to the opening and operations phase. 
So um, there's also a website that, again, I've mentioned before that is full of information um, uh, that is at uh, toronto.ca uh, shelter, uh, shelter expansion sites. Uh, so that's toronto.ca slash shelter expansion sites. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, frequently asked questions that can be accessed there. That's where we will be posting the feedback received at this meeting, as well as the recording and the presentation. That's really home base for getting good uh, information as well. It has our email address there, so you can be in touch with us and a phone number. So uh, I'm the facilitator for this initial phase of uh, engagement. Eventually, I'll be handing it over entirely to Homes First, which is Ryan. Um, I'll be, you know, making sure that your concerns are heard, that they are uh, answers are addressed, that information is flowing back and forth, that uh, we're also trying to do a, a community liaison committee that relies on hearing from you by email and during this meeting, getting an indication of whether your interest would be great too, to sit on a community liaison committee. Generally speaking, it's it's something that representatives of organizations sit on as opposed to just individuals so that you can report mm -hmm. from your community and you can re do what, what you need to know and want to say, and we can report back and you distribute it through your network. So the, the, the liaison committee is generally uh, a body uh, that is consists of people who represent business improvement associations, resident associations, large organizations, nonprofits, big businesses and schools, things like that in the neighborhood, as they want a seat at the table to know what's going on and who to call and how to get information and what's going on and how to build relationships to make this thing a success. So we're keen to hear from you. There's the email address on the screen. If you're on the phone, that's clc.101placercourt at gmail.com or hit the site, website on the city and reach out to us and indicate if you're interested in being on that CLC. We'd love to hear from you. And that about wraps up uh, the overall community engagement uh, overview. Um, I want to remind you that we are next slide uh, recording the meeting again. Try to avoid saying your name, identifying yourself when you ask a question. Next slide. Um, there's a there's some there's some information here how to ask a question. Just some basics on WebEx. Um, you can raise your hand. You can see that there's a uh, little box on the right that has a hand icon. You can raise it. We'll see it and put you on a speaking queue. Um, you can. Activate well, hopefully we have the Q and a box activated now. It's time to put it up there so people can start typing in their questions. We've also received uh, a, a number of questions um, in advance on email because when we distributed the flyer to nearby households and businesses, we told people that they could pre ask a question by sending it in by email. So we'll probably kick things off by taking a few of those questions until we got people raising their hands or typing questions into the Q and a, um, and, uh, you know, getting answers from Ryan and Tracy and uh, their associates. Next, uh, slide, please. Um, if you're on the phone, uh, you can ask questions. You can raise your hand by hitting star three. Okay. That will indicate you want to speak. You're on the phone and star three will tell us you're, you want to ask a question. I'll see your hand up and uh, I'll say the first three digits of your phone number to sort of, you know, try to figure out that's you that you're waiting and uh, you will uh, you'll be unmuted and you'll be able to ask your question, give your comment. And then, of course, we want you to dial star three again to put your hand down. So, again, on the phone, you want to talk star three. That's the most that's what you got to remember. Okay, um, next slide please we are now going to basically hold on this um slide uh you know again we we'll do our best to get as many questions answered and if we don't get to all of them we will collect them and issue a community bulletin and post it on the website uh, so every every inquiry every answer will be answered hopefully in the context of this meeting but if not we will make extra efforts to uh, post them on the website uh, we'll we'll be monitoring the Q and A to ensure you know the most common issues are addressed. If there's more than we can get to, 
Uh, but I think we should just kind of hit it. We should just get going. Are we ready, uh, Zuna, or can you tell us if the Q&A box is up and running? It looks like it is here. Someone from the tech side, it's can you can now live? It's now live. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to start because we don't have anything typed in there yet uh, or ha no hands up that I can see with a couple of questions off the uh, pre received email questions. Um, this one's for Ryan. Uh, people are curious about what a residence day might look like, you know, and maybe are, are people required to leave the shelter uh, during the day? Is there a curfew? Um, that's sort of like, well, well, you know, what happens, uh, you know, during the day with each client? Can you explain an average day? Yeah, I definitely can. Um, so, yes, yeah, so residents can come and go as they please. There's not any uh, sort of mandatory time. We do have a, a curfew in place. Um, and it's different for each program. I believe this program, it'll be um, midnight will be the curfew from Monday to Friday and uh, I'll correct me if I'm wrong. And then uh, Friday or S Friday, Saturday will be a later curfew. It'll be till one. Uh, and usually we do have a smoke break in between those late hours where folks can go out and then come back in. Um, so generally a typical day, uh, it's you know not very different compared to any other person's day, you know, wake up. Uh, brush your teeth, uh, come down for breakfast. So, um, uh, I, you know, a lot of our residents will be on site during all three meal times, you know, um, and sort of form their day around that. But not everybody. Um, often people will check in with their ICM worker or with a, a worker that's on site that they know, attend any appointments that they might have, or work on finding employments or housing with their workers or independently. Uh, and then just, you know, going out to attend on their own sort of personal social agenda um, and, and meeting friends or going out to the neighborhoods they're familiar with. Uh, and, but like I said, generally, you know, I'd say around meal times is when it's the most activity on site. Um, Eileen or Michael, I don't know if you have anything to add about the, uh, about the curfew times and, and about that kind of schedule. No, that that's about right, uh, Ryan. But as you said, I mean, we. We, we haven't set up the program officially there yet, so that may be adjusted, but that's general throughout our locations. I, could I just, uh, before we, we have something in the Q&A, just before we get to that one, um, will some of the shelter residents actually have, have jobs? Will be, they be potentially going out and working uh, during the day? Uh, potentially, yes. So a lot of our, um, you know, at a, many of our other programs and sites that we operate, there are residents that work nine to five, they work night shifts. Um, so, uh, yeah, definitely some of our residents, you know, have their own cars that they park on site and commute to, to their jobs. So definitely there are going to be some residents that already have employment. Great. Okay. So I'm going to stop it there. We need to actually, I'm sorry, Bob, check in with Bob, the translator to get, uh, if you can, the gist of those questions, Bob, curfews coming and going and people working or how they, what their average day is like. Can you translate for us, Bob? Okay, so this question is like this. If you have a job, you can go to the office, you can go to the office. If you have a job, you can go to the office. Then you can go to the office. Then you can go to the office. Then you can go to the office. 呃，这是关于这个消息的问题，这个是工作的问题，还有这个每天日常看起来是怎么样？嗯，那个是很平常，早上起来，然后的刷牙啊，吃早饭，然后的话，这是在现场的话会有这个人跟你联系。那么吃饭是最多的活动在一起，那吃完饭之后的话，你可以出去啊，参与自己的这个社区的活动呀，见自己的朋友呀，都是没有什么问题的。Thank you, Bob. I apologize, of course, for going so long yeah. before the translation. Not necessary to interpret. That's why. <laughs> okay, we're going to take the first question from the Q and A box now, um, and I'll read it in English, and then Bob, you can translate it, and then we'll get an answer. So uh, uh, this individual asks, um, "What kind of support might the shelter welcome from volunteers who live in the community?" Uh, Bob, first the translation, please. 嗯，这第一个问题呢是说呢，就是说，呃，如果社区提供这个义务的这个帮助的话，那么你们会希望什么样的类型的帮助呢？就是给你们这个避难所提供帮助呢 ？All right, I want to throw this to Ryan. 
Yeah, so there are a number of different volunteer opportunities that we can offer. It really depends on the wants and needs of our residents. Um, generally, the volunteer opportunities we look for are program facilitators uh, and folks that are interested in running activities, helping out with programs, doing community cleanups or community events, uh, those kind of things um, are, are really helpful. 那么呢，这个呢，有好几项了啊，就要看我们非常欢迎呢，不同种类的这个呃呃这个义工，是吧？去看看这个避难所的需要，像第一种情况呢，就是说呢，我们希望这种所促进，就是说呢，可以给我们
um, as long as they meet the zoning requirements and bylaws. Um, 那么呢，这个，呃，所以这个市市政厅啊，这些，呃，这个权授权，那么这样的话可以，呃，选择这个地点，看看这个，呃，是否满足所需要的这种要求。如果都满足要求的话，就选择这个新的这个地址。And once we've ensured that the zoning and bylaws are were in line with those, then we reach out to local councillors and then begin the engagement process with the community. Uh, having information such as this, we invite the communities out to ask questions. Um, and you know, have a conversation is uh, part of our engagement process. 那么呢，一旦这个满足这个城市法则之后的话，我们就会跟当地的这个议员呢去进行这个沟通，呃，然后的话跟这个当地的这个居民进行这个呃这个沟通，问他们收集信息，有什么问题进行对话，呃，然后
And finally, that being said, uh, while staff has delegated the authority to, uh, to locate the shelter, I'm very much a part of the consultations going forward and very much a part of ensuring the health of the community, even after the shelter is fully functioning. That, that uh, I will be actively involved in that along with community agencies, Homes First, our local police division, all of the people that will help ensure the health of the community and the, and the health of the shelter. Uh,古亚纳是,呃,是了,有这个数学,来,选定这个地址,呃,然后的话,这是其中要进行一部分这种对话,那么确保呢,就是说,呃,即使在这个避难所运行之后,人呢,呃,给他提供帮助,和比如
呃，说到我这个是住在这个社区，以前听说这种避难所呢，都是离我们比较远，其实不是这样，离我们很近，也就几分钟吧。那么呢，我们有这个小孩子上学，就担心这个小孩子安全的问题，怎么能保证这个安全呢？然后又读了一个另外一个人说，我是个老年人呢，经常在这个社区这个每天都散步，现在这个避难所离我这么近，那就是说这个散步怎么保证我的安全呢？很多类似的问题，所以说并起来，让这个下面一个警官去回答。So thank you for the question. I'll kind of break it down into a couple sections uh, and for the translator as well. And I'll do my best to answer your question. Um, first off, uh, we really take feedback and community questions and concerns very seriously from an organization. So that intel that we get really dictates the way uh, we set up policies, but also allows us to connect with residents based on the feedback that we're getting. So we want to hear as much as we can so we can respond in a quick way and we can interact or um, uh, engage with our residents in a way that's going to reduce this kind of negative um, okay. uh, activity that you're referring to. Also, we do have our policies that are put in place and rules that are put in place based on the feedback that we're getting. So, if there's certain trespassing that's happening and we're able to prove, you know, as an example, we're able to pr prove that that's one of our residents. We can engage with that resident, come up with the terms of agreement, or come up with some sort of disciplinary action that can reduce that activity. So we do have processes in place as well to acknowledge those kind of challenges. 那么呢，另外一点的话，我们呢是制定相应的政策和相应的这个呃规程，然后呢，基于得到这个回馈，然后呢，跟这个居民呢进行这个沟通，达成这种相应的协议，呃，减少这方面的这个活动，减少呃这个对社区的。Also, Homes First really does uh, pride, pride ourselves on working on our close working relationships that we have with local police divisions. And we're very confident that our close relationship with the 33 division will enable us to efficiently respond to criminal or disruptive activities and, and pivot as needed based on the feedback that we're getting. And uh, uh, about the relationship, uh, the proximity of the, the school. So I'm getting a bit of feedback here. Anyone can just mute me yourself. Thank you so much. Um, in proximity to the school, I know it is. I definitely understand those concerns. And, um, you know, we're not going to say that every resident uh, poses any kind of threat or is going to be using in public or anything like that. Um, most of our shelters are close to some sort of residential area. Um, you know, we have some downtown, some in, in uh, less densely packed neighborhoods, um, but we do promote a harm reduction approach uh, in our shelters. And that does include giving people a safe space to use indoors, but also to dispose of any needles or uh, harm reduction supplies that they might be using safely. Mm -hmm. 在一些这个人口比较密呃不那么密集的地方，那么呢，我们呢会这个呃采取这种这个措施，减少他们对这个社区这个避难所的这种危害行为，减少。然后的话，还会有这个呃让他们正确的使用这个针头呀，还有这个别的一些这个呃物质，确保这个社区的安全。And lastly, I'll just say before I maybe throw it over to to others, um, we do take. You know, we really take pride in our relationships with the community and we want to be as transparent as possible. So open communication is really key. 
So if drug use or any kind of activity or, or negative activity becomes a problem in your area, we of course want to know about it if we don't already, and we want to work with you to reduce that, uh, that kind of activity. Each case is different, but we're going to do our best to work with you and work with our residents to address those issues. So we really want to be uh, an open communication and an open uh, working relationship with the community to address issues quickly and, and, uh, and efficiently. 那么最后一点呢，就是说呢，这个最重要的话就是说和社区呢进行开诚布公的这种沟通，透明的这种沟通。那么尽快解决的这个呃负面的影响，比如说，比如用这个药物呀，或者是用这个别的方面造成负面的
，呃，这个在真的像这个散步的时候，在街道上散步啊，对安全有担心，那么的话，我就建议呢，这个事情呢，给我们进行报告，我们会会回馈。嗯、呃，你你要么可以打九幺幺，要可以打这个警察的非紧急电话四一六那个八零零八零五二二二二，这样的话我们可以这个派警官开车过去，或者是像我一样跟你进行呢进行这个联系，回答你这个方面的问题。Thank you. No, sorry. I want one more thing. I want to add. Now, I stress the importance of reporting because um, when you report um. Any matter with the police, we we, we track it, and we're able to um, do, through tracking uh, numbers, we're able to uh, determine uh, when the when the times of uh, the most need is in a uh, in an area or uh, which area in our division uh, requires the most attention, and then we can allot resources according to this data. So if you don't re if if the community members don't report um, incidences. Um, then we it makes our job difficult in recognizing where we need to be and at what times is the best to be in those areas. 嗯，另外再再讲一下哈。那么呢，这个呢就是说鼓励你们要呃要报告这个事情。那么如果你要是报告了以后，我们就根据这个呃数据或电话进行这个追踪，就知道的话哦，这个应该到什么地方去，呃，什么在我们这个管区之内，什么区域应该受到我们的关注。那么，如果你不做报告的话，那么呢，我们就这些事情不报告，我们就不知道。这样的话，我们的工作就比较难做，不知道应该去哪，不知道什么时候应该去。Thank you.、Um, we're going to take a call in. Jane,、hey, no、I wonder if I could just add one one more thing. Of course, we counselor. From, we've heard from the host.、Uh, I, I mentioned Division Thirty Three、uh, before,、um, and I, I just want to tell people. You know, further south in the riding, where we've had to host an emergency shelter for for in order to accommodate to,、um, shelter residents during COVID, we have established a very good partnership with Division Thirty、uh, Three.、Uh, uh, Officer Chan is being too humble. <laughs> They have been very helpful for us in that emergency circumstance in making sure. That 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 we don't have these problems in the community. That we mitigate these types of problems in the community. Hold it there, counselor. 嗯，是的，是的，就是说呢，我再加一句啊。那么呢，我们和这个三十三这个景区呢有很好的这个合作关系。那么这个像我们这个在这个 COVID-19 期间呢，有些紧急的这个叫这个避难所。那么这个陈警官呢，他是三十三区的，我们关系很好。他呢人呢也非常这个谦虚，嗯、呃，他呢对我们这个提供了很大的这个帮助。我们呢一起呢减少这个呃社区产生这种问题。And there's one other partner we haven't mentioned tonight. We're hoping comes along as we go here. In the business park, uh, where Placer Court is situated, we have a number of faith-based. Uh, uh, facilities from Young Nat Church, the Ismaili Center. All of these are are faith based communities that function on the same、uh, value that we help those who don't help themselves. And so we are hoping that they will very much become a partner and a, and a focus and a destination for those residents. 另外一点的话，就要提一下关于别的一个这个合作伙伴的啊。嗯，说到这个 ，so you know, just cannot repeat the name for the partners. Uh, you mean a church and a center and something. Sorry, and so 这样的话就是说呢，我们在一起就和他们进行这个合作关系。那么，呃，这个目标，呃，达到一致的目标。Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and we're going to go to a call-in user whose phone number. Uh, goes something like four one six four nine. If、um, they can be unmuted, this call-in user has their hand up. You are now unmuted.、Uh, well, you're muted again. Let's、eh, there. It's off. Someone who's got their hand up on the phone. Hello. Ah,、uh, yes, yes. I think that might be me. Okay, great. <clears throat> um, yes. Um, well. Um, I, I understand that Shelley saw the building in in an industrial area there, but 
The fact is um, the McNichol Bridge is not very wide to cross. And um, the fact that the shelter is coming there is having, will have a big impact on the residents who live right there. And especially the um, one woman, a uh, recent widow, uh, mentioned to me that she was very nervous about the fact that when people walk across the McNichol Bridge from uh, the west side, or rather the east side of the parkway, before they um, even get anywhere near the first side street, there's a way to go down into the green space behind the houses. So someone can go down there behind all the houses that back onto the parkway and continue walking around beside all, behind all the houses that back onto the Seneca parking lots and, and the whole area um, right around to uh, the end of the residential section. So, I mean, this woman was very concerned about can this I, because can I just get great, she, get you know, she knows boss. that people can be loitering out there and, and just, you know, having a good look or coming through over the fences or whatever. But you anyway, it, just... it certainly um, is not placed in an area that is not near a residential community. And this, this community is 50 or 55 years old, the houses are. And so there are a lot of seniors here too. A lot of seniors who are seen out walking. And I think it's going to have a very big impact on our neighborhood. Thank you. Um, and I, and I'm not sure. I know um, when Ryan mentioned a good relationship with the 33 division and so forth, but that's after the fact. We, we have to have the incidents in order to report them. And so here we are. We're going to have them. They happen to us. So, Thank you. You know, uh, it's not much wonder the neighborhood is upset. And I know that some councillors nearby uh, argued that it wasn't a good uh, thing to do to have um, to voice this onto a safe community because we all know what um, you know that there are going to be disruptions. So, thank you, uh, caller. We I'm sorry we have to get your comment translated. So that was a lot, Bob, to translate. Can you please summarize? Yes, yes. Uh one China of nearly a lot of a lot of uh这个这个地方呢说在麦克尼克这个地方的不呃穿过这个地方呢是并不足够的这个宽不够足够的大然后他讲了这一个好几个路名字啊一个女士给我反映她很紧张很nervous走在这边的时候呃又说了这个建
那么呢，你们这种担心呢，呃，觉得不安全，呃，这个还是个新人呢，或在社区里进行活动都觉得不安全，我们可以理解。那我们这种叫做是一个联络委员会，那么让我们自己的这个呃避难所的工作人员呢，熟悉这个社区啊，什么地方呢是安全，什么地方不安全，进行这种沟通。Thank you. So, Bob, I'd like to ask Tracy if she could respond to aspects of the comment. Again, we'd also like to keep comments kind of short because we need to translate them and share the mic. But Tracy, do you want to respond to aspects of that comment about uh, shelter locations and safety concerns of locals? Sure. So I think I'll add to what many of the panel members have said here. I've worked in the shelter system for about 20 plus years, and all of the shelters that I've worked uh, in have been in residential areas across the street from schools. Some even shared the same lot as the child care center. Mm. 比如说呢，这个有时候就在学校附近，或者是在这个呃社区附近。so it's not uncommon at all, but I do understand people's um, hesitation or concerns. And that's something, um, like Ryan said before, that uh, we can uh, talk about at the, not only the community liaison uh, committee, that's a good venue as well, but just having a good relationship uh, with the shelter, the shelter staff and understanding uh, the types of programs and services that are there, I think goes a long way to kind of quelling some of those concerns and fears. 那么呢，我明白这些担心和这种犹豫和担心。那么呢，这进行进行对话。那么避难所的工作人员呢，了解这种情况，建立良好的这种关系。那么的话，就是说，这是一个比较长的路去走。Many of the same、uh, factors that make a neighborhood attractive to you, close to schools, close to transit, close to community resources, are what we also look for when citing a shelter. So it's not uncommon to kind of see to see that parallel. 那么呢，另外一点说过了，很多事实就是说，我们这个决定决定一个避难所的地点的时候的话，也就是要考虑到啊，靠近学校呀，呃，这个靠近这个公共交通呀，靠近这个资源，这个呃得到资源呢，这也是我们本身去选避难所的一个决定因素。And I think specifically, uh, the caller mentioned a uh, another counselor in the adjacent ward uh, not being um, keen on having a shelter in in their ward. And I just want to let everyone know that counselor opposition, uh, although we do want uh, counselors and local counselors to be on board, it's quite uh, you know it's helpful to us in our process when counselors are on board. Someone a counselor's opposition will not necessarily stop a shelter from being located there. There are lots of other factors that can contribute to that. So once we go through the process of citing a shelter, we have to negotiate. Actually, so maybe I'll pause there. Sorry, I forgot about the translation. So while in that particular site, the counselor may have opposed, that wasn't the reason for not having the shelter at the site. There were other factors. And so we have to negotiate with the, the landlord, make sure that we can come to an agreement that it's affordable to us. There are a number of other factors that we look at before going forward with the property of the shelter. 那么呢，并不因为这个议员的反对啊，就是这个原因，我们就不能选择这个避难所了。还有别的很多其他的这个因素，比如说我们还和这个 landlord， 就是这个业主呢，达成这种协议，还要看其他各个方面的这个因素，才能做出这个决定。And maybe just to close it off, I will say, out of all the shelter openings I've been involved in, like I said, these are common concerns and it's good that people are expressing them. Uh, what I've seen when the shelter actually opens is actually um, most of the time that the community embraces the shelter opening. And those concerns are, um, you know, if they do come up, are addressed with shelter staff and there is a good resolution to that. And typically the shelter has no problem integrating into the neighborhood at all. That's my uh, practical experience. 嗯，那么我的这个实际的经验是这样子的：当这个避难所呃运行之后的话，其实这个担心是很很普通的，对吧？很普遍的。但是呢，以我的经验而而而定，一旦避难所这个开了之后的话，绝大部分的时间呢，呃，这个都是呃没有这么大的问题，很多问题可以得到这个解决。
，这是呃基于我的这个实际的这个经验。Thank you. I'm going to go back to the、uh, email questions we received before the meeting、um, to ask Ryan、uh, some more basic questions about operations. 下面就是说，在会议之前收到的 email 关于问 Ryan 关于这个呃这个避难所的这个运营的问题。So、people are asking if people homeless people can just randomly arrive at the placer court shelter 24 hours a day and expect to get in. Can they stay night after night? And is there a maximum number of nights that someone can stay? 那么是不是有人呢就可以随机的跑到这个避难所来，然后的话在那呃待上这个二十四小时，待一晚上，还待了一夜，又待了一夜，有没有最大的这个晚上的这个限制呢 ？Ryan, thank you. Um, there is no time limit for how long people can stay, as long as they are, you know, um, being respectful, following the rules, and, and you know, not not breaking any rules or anything like that. And engaging with the program、uh, in a respectful way, they can stay as long as they wish or as long as they need. This one, uh, 倒没有时间限制，只要他呢，这个遵循了这边的规程，呃，不破坏这边的这个呃政策，呃，然后尊重这里的这个政策，只要他需要，就可以一直待在这里。Unless、uh, there have been some other、uh, accommodations put in place. Like, for example, people working late or working in overnight. Generally, people can't come and go outside of the curfew hours. 那么呢，也有些个例外，除非呢，比如说他这个上班，啊，这个回来迟到，或者是这个夜里上班，那么在这个宵禁的时候不能随便出门。But if we have space available and people、uh, need our services and they're walking right up to the building or referred from another agency. We can do an intake pretty much any time of the day, if we have the space. 那么如果我们有这个有位置的话，那么呢，任何人的话就可以自己走过来，或者是别的这个机构把它转介过来。我们呢，任何时候都可以进行这个呃接纳的这种这个服务。And if we don't have a bed available, our shelter staff will make referrals to other shelters in the area and find accommodations to make sure that they have somewhere to stay. We won't just Let them wander and and not make any attempt to or or way to to get them a bed. 嗯，假如我们这个地方没有这个额外的床位的话，我们呢也会把它推荐给区域的其他的这个地方去，而不会说让它是没有地方去。Jane, can you remind me of some of the other? Questions? Yes, right. But can you clarify? Do most people arrive at the shelter just walking up, or are they assigned through central intake? I think that's. The essence of that question. 嗯，那么这个问题是这样问的。实际上就是说，是不是绝大部分的人呢都可以直接自己走到你们这里来呢？还是说呢需要这个从那个 central intake 那个部门转介推荐过来呢 ？Most residents will be referred from central intake, um, or other service agencies in the city, um, or from other homes first locations as well. But we do accommodate walk-in intakes as well. But I'd say the majority come from central intake. 嗯，虽然我们呢也接纳这个直接走来的这个这个人士，但是呢，绝大部分情况下呢，我们是需要他们通过 central intake 还有这个呃别的这个地方转介过来，包括我们城市当中的我们那个 home first 的其他的这个呃地方的转介，绝大部分都需要转介。Great. Um, there's another、uh, couple of questions here、um, on email,、um, such as how much one-on-one -on -one interaction time would a shelter resident have each day with a professional case manager or staff member? 那么呢，这个问题是问的是呢，在这个每天，那么一个人呢？有多长时间的一对一的这种啊，这个对话和你的个案经理或者你的这个工作人员 ？It's a great question. I might actually throw that over to our site manager Eileen, who has a little bit more experience with with them. How often people can have one-on-one -on -one time with with their workers? 
。行，这个呢，跟我们这个艾丽她更多这方面的现场的经验，回答这个问题，一对一有多长时间 ？Thanks, Ryan. Uh, so caseworkers are on site Monday to Friday between nine to five, and they do have one late day from twelve to eight. 呃，这个工作人员呢，在这样是周一到周五早上九点到下午五点。Therefore, uh, the residents will have access to caseworkers within those eight hours that staff are on site, and because the site is staffed twenty four seven, there is somebody, there is always somebody they are able to engage with. 那么呢，这样的话，如果你要这个有八个小时的话，可以跟你这个个案工作者进行这个时间对话。我们是每周七天，每天二十四小时都会有人服务。I will also add, you can also make appointments with your case workers that can help you with your appointments outside of the shelter as well. So case management workers and case workers can be available, you know, to to assist resident outside of their hours or outside of the shelter with certain appointments if needed. 如果需要的话，也可以提前呢跟你的个案工作者呢约好，这样的话在在避难所之外的时间或之外的地点也可以得到帮助。And it's it's uh okay, so we are we have about twenty minutes left for Q and A comments. I remind people that you can use the chat box, you can raise and lower your hand if you're on a phone. By pressing star three. In fact, if you've had your hand up and you've spoken, you might want to put the hand down or put it up again so we know if you want to speak or anyone else. Um, we have some more um, email questions we can get to, but we welcome your. There's no big lineup. If people want to talk, this is a public meeting for you. So um, if there's Anyone else? Uh, we can go back to the caller. If uh, I wanted to just pause the caller so that we could translate their comment, Bob. 嗯，那么呢，我们还有这个二十多分钟的时间回答和这个提问和回答。那么呢，我们呢，呃 ，email 当中也有一些问题，但是我们希望大家能不能这个呃打电话问问题，呃，那么这样的话讲。中间呢必须暂停一下，因为呢需要翻译，还要把它翻译一下。嗯、um, ，Can I also just add？ 嗯、um, ，如果您您是在电话上面问问题的话，请点星三啊，然后取消问题的话也点星三。这样的话，如果您已经问题了，或者是觉得决定不想问问题的话，手就会被放下来。谢谢。Okay. Um, do you want to translate the that back in English for us? Okay. Bob? So if you want to ask question, you and uh, press star and number three. Gotcha. And, uh, if you okay. don't want to ask question, you should also press uh, star and uh, number That's three. That's great, Bob. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. That's excellent to get translated. There is a call in user uh, number 41664 um, has their hand up or we can unmute and welcome your comment or question. You are unmuted. Oh, hello. Yeah. Hello. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, no, I had a question about um, <clears throat> um, how how uh, much things are provided for the clients, um, or do they need to go out and find stores where they can buy their own cigarettes or, um, you know, chewing gum or candy bar or whatever, or do they have ability to uh, access those things within the shelter? Like how how much are are the, how much um, do they need to go difficulty do they have in getting the things that they would like for their own personal use? Great question. Mm -hmm. I will get translated and then go to Ryan. 嗯，那么我想问一下，这个客户的话，如果他们想买一些自己需要的个人这个物品的话，那么有
是否是某个困难，困难程度怎么样？ Um, that's a great question. Uh, so things like uh, meals and snacks are provided. Um, we do have uh, candy or junk food uh, as incentives for some of our programs uh, and things like that available. 那么呢，这是很好的问题。像我们这里呢，这个吃的这个饭呀、啊，还有一些这个呃，这个小吃啊，都是已经都都已经提供了，包括这个糖呀，都已经有的。Toiletries uh, and uh, hygiene products are provided uh, to residents, uh, male and female, identifying clients. Uh, um, we have those things available. Um, we're lucky to always have a great uh, donation support as well. So things like clothing and other kind of uh, toiletries or day-to-day -day items are available through donations. 那么呢，这个呃，卫生用品呀，这个东西，我们呢，这个助理上都已经提供。呃，男的女的都会提供。另外一点，我们很好的这种捐献的捐献的东西，比如说包括这种衣服呀，包括这种卫生品也都有。嗯、um, ，But things like like cigarettes, for example, you know, aren't provided. People will need to go out and, and buy their own things, and and you know, obviously, some people have more disposable income than others. Um, but those kind of personal items are、uh, they have to provide themselves. 那么呢，另外一点的话。他要自己解决，比如说你说这个香烟，那么他们要自己出去，那就是自己买。嗯、um, ，other things that we like to make available are um like art supplies, uh stationary items, uh and things like games. So we'll have some program uh budget money to go and spend on those things for like recreational activities. But we also welcome those donations as well for sure. 嗯，另外一点的话，我们还提供一些这个别的方面的这个物品，比如说艺术方面呀，这个文具方面呀，呃，这个我们有一定的这个资金去购买这些这些娱乐方面的这个事情。当然了，我们也欢迎这个捐献。Ily or Michael, would you like to add to anything that I may have missed? Uh, it's Michael here from Homes First. I I, I think you've you've covered the basics. I mean. Speaking of basics, that you know they're provided uh, uh, at the shelters, and then you know they're for other things that people may need to access. So some, you know, our residents are like、uh, most other people. They, they,、uh, many of them, most of them have some income, so they they may shop in the neighborhood. They may get some things that we don't provide. But I think Ryan, you covered most of it. 嗯，我觉得你这个让绝大部分你提到了，就我们这边的居民呢，有些是有收入的，那么呢，他们可以买他们所自己需要的东西。We also have、uh, personal protective equipment、uh, available, like PPE, like masks, gloves, sanitizer available, and all first aid supplies and things like that available on site. 嗯，另外一点，我们有些安全的防护设备也也会提供啊，像这种这个口罩呀、手套呀等等这些防护设备，我们也有的。Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else have a comment question? I think we are kind of、uh, getting to the point of wrapping this up.、Um, if there's anything else that uh, uh, the presenters want to say, maybe you can take a couple of minutes. But we've sort of made our way through the email questions and the chat box questions, and I don't see any other people、um, waiting in line to ask a question. So、uh, we will be wrapping it up, and as again summarizing the feedback and comments received at the meeting, here to post on the public website, and following up with、uh, community bulletins, with any other issues and concerns. We're continuing to meet with the community and stakeholders to、uh, get to know each other, build relationships, and again, I really want to emphasize. If you're interested at all in、uh, continuing on this dialogue in the community liaison committee, we want to hear from you.、Um, that would be involving just send us an email to clc.101 placercourt at gmail.com. That email address is also on the website. Bob, can you? 嗯，这样的基本上就是呃，该这样的啊，就是说，如果你们呃，我要强调一下。这个对话是非常重要。那么呢，你如果对这个仍然有兴趣的话
，我们想听到倾听你们的这个回馈，呃，可以用不同各种不同的形式啊，嗯、呃，这种比如说这种我们的社区的这个聊天聊天的这个嗯、呃、网站呀、啊，还有一些这个嗯、呃。Jane, can I just can I just uh, uh, say something to Ed before we wrap up that I think will help sort of the some of the the last questions. This is a this is a a great concern, and I hear the concerns loud and clear, loud and clear. But I I just wanted to say before we wrap up on behalf of the the you know shelter housing and support and homes first that are presenting to us. 那么呢，这样子啊，就是说呢，刚才最后一段呢。呃，我听到了这个这个担心，非常好的担心。这个呢，我确实、yeah. 我听得很清楚。嗯 ，Yeah, one of the reasons that council uh was willing to to delegate to the authority to uh to shelter housing and support to go ahead and buy locations that they thought they could do them is the exhaustive work they've done to understand what makes. A much healthier shelter. What makes a better shelter? And I think that 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 has kind of been been, you know, washed aside by the difficult time we've had during the COVID、uh, pandemic. But I want people to remember that about them. 那么呢，另外一点就是说呢，我们呃，一一一一元得到这个权利，来这个买这个地点来进行这个呃建造这个避难所。让大家明白，就是说，怎么能够呃，变成这个更好的这个避难所。那么，在这个困难难题期间呢，这个是很困难的。希望大家能记住这个。What what our shelter housing、uh, administration said to us, said to council, said to Mayor Tory, is that we've looked at all of the、uh, the different ways that you can serve the homeless, and what we know is small is better. You need you need a thousand beds, but they shouldn't all be in one building. Small is better. 那么呢，这点呢，就是说呢，我们呢，呃呃，告诉了管理部门，告诉了我们，也告诉了我们这个市长啊，长焦人市长，那就是说不同的方式啊，来这个帮助无家可归者。那么呢，小的是更好的，一千个床位不能说在一个建筑物里面。Yes. So, in an emergency during the pandemic, we've had to use hotels where sometimes there are three hundred or more troubled homeless people in one facility. But what is being contemplated at Placer Court is a shelter with much more healthy supports that will open with only fifty-eight residents, which is. Really, state of the art to have a much healthier uh, uh, shelter in a healthy community. 那么呢，在紧急情况下啊，在这个 COVID-19 期间的话，有时候的话，我们要用到这个酒店，比如说呢，三百个以上的人可以转移到酒店啊，作为这个避难所一个地方。那么对于这个避难所来说的话，它才有五十八个这个床位。除了这种情况，其实更加这个健康，对社区也是社区更加健康。If that turned out not to be true, I will move heaven and earth to do what needs to be done. But the reason council gave this delegated authority is that that concept of smaller shelters spread out across the city is a much healthier situation. And while it's a change and it's difficult. It was not without a lot of thought and planning. And、mm, those are my comments. 嗯，我的这个这个评价就是这样说。呃，议员给了这种权利，那么得出这个结论。那么，在城市当中，小的这种避难所更多，那么对社区来说是更加的这个安全。Thank you.、Um, Thanks. I also want to. Sorry,、uh, I just、uh, I just realized the the last part. I、uh, just need to add to that. Sure, sure. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. About、uh, what Shelley said about you know she'll do 
uh, her best to to help the community. Uh,现在我就是为大家就是翻译一下，就是呃第二个部分呢，因为呃刚刚高雪丽议员也说了，就是越小的这种避难所，它是会对呃社区啊，也是对那边的居民会越好。这个确实服务会质量也会提高这样然后如果要是有什么问题的话高雪丽市议员他一直都在这边会为大家提出提供出这样的服务你有什么问题的话或者有什么担心的话他会尽全力的帮您解决和帮您代表您的声音这样 Okay, thank you Thank you uh, I just uh, uh, interpret the second part and uh, the council says that the smaller and shorter, the better for the uh, residents and uh, communities, and uh, and also better uh, service quality. So, if you have any questions, need any help, you can. Our counselor is here for you, and uh, she will do her best to help you and to uh, let your voice be heard. Great. Thank you. I noticed that there are a couple of uh, Q and A comments coming in in the box, and I'm actually they were very related to this conversation we're just having. So to read them out loud, and if someone wants to respond more to them, they these comments and questions concern uh, con concern that the community is small, uh, and this impact is going to be large. Um, that um, they're worried that even talking about things like uh, needles and drug use uh, near churches and mosques uh, means that this uh, could be very problematic in the neighborhood. These are people's comments. I'm just relaying them in the Q&A box here. Uh, Bob? Yep. Uh,下面就是说呢,有一些这个担心就是说呢,社区越小,那么呢,这个影响就越大。比如说这个针头的使用呀,还有这个药,这个违禁药物的使用呀,还有这个丢弃的这种口罩之类的,那么这是非常是会引起问题的。and uh, people ultimately are in the comment um, are asking, you know, who is who will be held responsible? And for that, I, I think I want to uh, ask Tracy, ultimately, as a city representative, from shelter and housing supports, who is ultimately responsible if things really go uh, badly in a shelter? Um, Sure,Jane,Thanks.Thank you, Jane. So I do think there is a collective responsibility here uh, with, with all of us. So shelter support and administration works very closely with the shelter provider, which is Homes First, and who works very closely with the counselor and the local community via the community liaison committee. And that really is a venue and vehicle for issues, concerns to be brought up and addressed and responded to um, in a timely um, fashion. 那么呢，这个呢，包括这个避难所的管理部门，包括我们说的这个Home First 这个机构，呃，还有这个这个联络委员会等等，那么都会进行合作，尽及时的解决出现的问题。And there are several ways that you can get in touch with not only the staff that are on site 24 hours, but also your local counselor and ultimately our division as well. 那呢，不只是刚才说的那种呃。还有别的不同的方式呢，跟跟我们进行联系。除了呃避难所的工作人员，二十四小时都有人之外，还可以跟这个当地的这个议员呀，还有这个我们的这个呃警察机构。And I would just like to add, I think uh, Councillor Shelley and the and Ryan have responded to a lot of the spirit of these questions. Um, but I'd just like to add that uh, these are you know real and um, you know appropriate concerns. And the best way to kind of work together is to have that good relationship. And I just want people to keep in mind. Oh, sorry. No,另外的话，我要增加一下，就是除了这个前面这个修理议员和这个Ryan回答问题之外的话，那么这个担心都是真实的。那么呢，最好的办法呢，就是说我们建立这个良好的这种关系来解决这些问题。and what I'd like for people to keep in mind is that the individuals that are accessing shelter services are a part of our community, uh, just like any one of us. 
um, and do need these services. And it's important that we keep that kind of front of mind. They're really no different from any one of us here. Um, they just need this particular service and we're here to provide it. 另外一点呢，我也想大家记住啊，那些到避难所的人来呢，他跟社区其他方面的人是一样的，他只是需要这种特别的服务，我们呢对他一样要友好，他和我们社区大人是一样的。And I will add that Homes First is a very experienced uh, shelter provider. They have a really great reputation uh, in the sector, and and I think that working with them closely will uh, you'll be able to resolve any issues that may come up. 另外一点呢，这个Home notice there's another quick. We are going to wrap it up in just a few minutes, but one quick question is in the Q and A. Uh, can anyone from Homes First or SSHA tell us what is the next closest shelter to Placer Court? If we don't know it offhand, we can uh, again put it on the website in a Q and A. But the next closest shelter to this one, anyone? Um, Ryan, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm okay. I'm not a geography major, but I believe Jane, it would be 5800 Young Street, which is in the Willowdale area. That's right. North York. Yep. Okay, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> 有没有任何人从这个Home Jane, I can add a point. Um, when we were doing the presentation, you may have seen from the map that there's certainly a concentration of shelters in some neighborhoods, and in some neighborhoods, uh, there are not any, and it really is our goal to have shelters across the city so that people who live in those communities can access shelters in their local community and not have to travel, you know, downtown or to the far ends of the city. They can really get the service where they live and where they're familiar uh, with mm -hmm. the services around them. Uh, Tracy, just uh, there's a point of clarification in the Q and A um, that's being asked. It, it just if you could clarify uh, whether a counselor can actually shut down a, a shelter, or how decisions would be made about whether a shelter continues or you know stops. Uh, just I think there's some confusion for some people. Can you sure. just, uh, spell that out as clearly as possible? Okay. Sure. Like I said, we uh, only appreciate first. Sorry, this time I interpret first. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, another question, I want to clarify. Ah, 那么议员有没有这个权利关闭一个避难所呢？或者是怎么样做出这个决定？一个避难所是应该继续呃这个运营，或者是停止呢 ？Thank you. So while I shared before that we certainly appreciate when counselors are on board and supportive of a shelter opening in their ward, counselor opposition alone will not stop a shelter from moving forward. Uh, so the issue of ultimate accountability, which is as it's read in this question, uh, is is something Tracy that lies uh, within the city and is shared between the councilor and SSHA and community councils. In terms of shelter opening and shelter siting? Yes. Yes, staff at SSHA have delegated authority for shelter siting. And All the right. process is we then um, let the counselor know and begin the community engagement process. Got it. All right. I hope that's uh, clear. Um, thank you, everyone. I want to say that we have reached the end of our time. And in fact, uh, we've run out of questions too. So well done. 
I want to thank you for participating, but I want to, uh, you know, invite the uh, Councillor Carroll to just have a, uh, you know, a last word of reflection uh, before we close it up. Okay, thanks, Jane. Um, I would just uh, really, it's a follow on in your answer to the to the last question. Uh, one councillor, one councillor can't, uh, but uh, council as a whole and Mayor Tory uh, made a commitment to the community that we have to address homelessness and our housing crisis. We have a crisis of affordability in housing. It is thrusting people into poverty. Um, it is causing people to lose their shelter altogether. And, you know, someone got upset earlier because I raised the issue of faith based institutions. And I, I think if we all go back in time, if we think back 100 years ago, 200 years ago, that helping the needy, helping the homeless didn't used to be a government, government responsibility. We, we look to our, our churches and our, our synagogues and our temples to do this work because it, 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 it went with their belief system and they wanted to do that, that type of charity work. Nowadays, people go to government and because the, the pressure was so great on the system, the mayor and council said, we need to have them. We need to spread them across the city. And, and in order to meet the deadline of getting them out there and, and into the communities in order to do this work, get people off the street and not have people dying in the winter, uh, we, we had to delegate the authority to staff to say, fairly go out across the map and begin this work on our behalf. Mm -hmm. And so one councillor can't stop one, but all of council and the mayor definitely agreed that we needed to do this. I know that's hard, but that is the reality that Toronto is in now. Yeah. 这种让无家可会的人士的地方住的话这样的话就很快的解决这种问题，要不让人们呢这个留在在大街上，呃，不能走，或者在冬天呢冻死在外面，呃，这个呢是都是为什么说语言啊有的这种权利要做这个事情，而且的话，呃，这个要尽快采取